we've kind of gone through this with a lot of different types of equations today. I thought we would try to find an equation of an exponential function given some specific um, conditions. So first thing, we want to find an equation in the form of this. f of x is equal to b times a to the negative x plus c such that f, our function, <clears throat> a has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2, b that it has a y-intercept at 16, and c that the x it has an x it has its x-intercept at x equals 2. So let's, I guess, work through this piece by piece. So let's start with this. Uh, remember now, a horizontal asymptote is a line that a function approaches. It never quite, get, uh, never quite gets to it, but it approaches that line. A horizontal asymptote would look like this, and a function would either come from down here and approach it this way, right, getting, getting really, really close, Murphy's Law of halves, getting really, really close, or possibly come at it this way, or whatever, but, so horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> so we want this horizontal asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, this to be negative two. This part's actually really easy. All you have to kind of keep in mind is that naturally, exponential functions have their y-intercept at y equals zero. That is to say, they approach heights of zero one way or the other. So to change that, all you're going to do is change this c value right here, and we're going to change that c value here to fit what we're looking for, which is negative two. So I'm just going to start here by saying, okay, I'm just going to move the function down. I'm going to rewrite it just as it was, as b times a to the negative x power minus two. So to satisfy this condition here, to move your exponential function up or down, just change that c value right here. So that was actually pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Um, okay, so that gives us our new equation. What's the second thing we want? The second thing we want is a y-intercept at 16. Y-intercept at 16, and that's an orange, so y-intercept at 16. So how's it? We want a y-intercept at 16. So now what we want is, right, y-intercepts, think about this, a y-intercept is the point zero something, isn't it? We get, it's where x equals zero, so zero y-intercept is kind of what we get here, isn't it? So think about that for a second. So we want f of zero, we want our function is when, when not f of x, but when the x value is zero, right? We want, that would give us b times a, right? It says here x is zero, so to the negative zero, as ridiculous as that is, minus two, and we want that thing to happen. When x is zero, we want this whole thing up here to have a total of 16. Isn't that what we want there? Okay, so a couple things to remember here. This is not horrible. You gotta kinda remember your rules of exponents. Remember that a to the zero, this is rule of exponents, we talked about this years ago, but a to the zero is equal to one. As long as a is not equal to zero and if it's a is zero we have a different issue here we have a domain issue here right so this a value right here just goes to one doesn't it so there is no such thing as a negative zero so this is the same as zero isn't it so a to the zero is one and b times one is b so now we can say this again we can say that b minus two is equal to 16 isn't that right all right hope you're following this is a, this is my value b then I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra, add positive 2 to both sides, and we get b is equal to 18. This is not that bad, is it? So now we have a new equation, I think. Our equation has changed a little bit. We're just gathering our pieces. First, we gather this piece here, right? We gathered the c value. It was negative 2. We just gathered the, the b value. So we have now, we have, moving on to our next piece, we have, well, let's leave it in orange for a second. So now that yields to us that... 18 a to the negative x minus 2 is our f of x right now, isn't it? And sorry if that f of x on the right hand side is bothering you, but that's true, right? You know, you can pick that up and move it over here. Okay, <clears throat> going to get to the third part of our equation here, and that is that we want the x intercept to be at 2. x intercept. So let's see what happens at an x intercept, right? x intercept. At the x-intercept, right here is the x-axis, and if we have an x-intercept, think about this for a second. If we have, we want it to be two. We want the x-intercept to be two. We want it to pass through this point right here. Well, think about that. Isn't this point right here? Doesn't it have a height of zero? So now what we're saying is we want, right? We're trying to get our x-intercept at 
too. I gotta go back to the gray pen, sorry, to keep this in order here, right? So now we're saying this, aren't we? We're saying that because it's our x intercept, we have a height of zero, so we have z what just happened, that was terrible. We have zero is equal to eighteen a not to the negative x, but we want when x is two, so look this negative sign right here, this negative sign right here is formulaic, right? But we want it at two, so x is equal to two. So this is not negative two. The the negative sign was already here, right? It's there and it's here. We said we want it in the form of this. So I put in this two. So let me maybe do this. Let's say everything that's in gray is formulaic, and I said I want it to happen at two. So here's x is equal to two. So I put in a two in front of that negative sign, and that's what I got, right? Okay. Remember we had minus two, didn't we? Now some algebra. Now some algebra, right? Now some algebra. I'm going to add two to both sides, right, to get rid of this because I'm trying to get trying to get a by itself, right? So we will get a. So we get two is equal to eighteen a to the negative two. <clears throat> now, if you don't mind, this is this is not difficult, but if I just did it, you'd say you'd be wondering where it happened. There's a rule, right? An exponential rule says this: says that a to the negative m is equal to one over a to the m. We proved that a ton of times. So if you need help with that, you know, I mean, write me a comment, and I'll explain why that's true and show you examples of why, just arithmetically, it's just absolutely true. But if you don't mind, now I'm gonna. It's it's convenient for me to write this. So if you want to see what I'm really doing, I'm just taking this right here, like this, and I'm just gonna take the reciprocal of this thing to to cure this negative exponent, and that will give us two. That will give us two is equal to 18 over a squared, right? I took the reciprocal of this, gave me 1 over a squared, and 18 times 1 is that 18, and the a squared is at the bottom, right? So that's really helpful because now I can just cross multiply here, I think, can I? Just to solve this thing out. I'm going to cross multiply here. I'm going to put, it doesn't matter which way it goes, let me just go in opposite directions. And we get 2a squared is equal to 18. Whoops, is equal to 18. Is equal to 18. Moving on, right? Just simple a simple algebra is going to divide both sides by 2 and get a squared is equal to 9. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Right? Take the square root of both sides. Square root here. Take the square root here. And a is equal to plus or minus 3. Well, we've been talking about this. You have to remember all these rules have to come along with you. We talked about it, the fact that a cannot equal a negative number, and we talked about that because taking the uh, e taking an even root of a negative number is, creates problems. So this a value here cannot be negative. Therefore, a must be three, right? And finally, we have our equation. I believe, and our equation should, I believe, look like this, right? Our equation should be eighteen times three to the negative x minus 2, right? That's our f of x. This is our f of x. So f of x equals this thing right here. This is our f of x. Now, a couple things. One, negative x one is not good. So I kind of rewrite this like this. Can I just take this negative here and put negative 1 inside there? And isn't 3 to the negative 1 the same as 1 third, right, to the x? And here's this 18. Let me caution you about a couple things that really make me nervous because they're done so often that we get to this type of math, you and I, and we forget some just fundamental stuff. And the fundamental thing I want to remind you of right now is PEMDAS because maybe you're thinking, oh, look, 18 times 3 is uh, 54 or something like that. Or maybe you got this far and you got this thing flipped over. Now you want to do 18 thirds. That's not true, is it? Because, look, we have an exponent happening here, and we can't do multiplication until we've done our exponents. So this is why we can't combine. They look like – this looks like some simplification right here. It is not. Say that to yourself three times. Um, otherwise, we're going to have some serious errors. So here's our final equation, I believe. Um, we're going to do a ton of these in class, so you've got to get really, really good at this. Let's look at the let's look at this thing. See if we can't find this thing up here. 
you know what, it's, it's here. I have this equation graphed out. Let's see what it was supposed to look like. Here it is. Okay, so here I graph the function in. This is not the point 17.5, whatever. This is, that's just the highest y value of 17 and proven by the fact this is 5.9 here. We have, look, 0 0.2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, otherwise known as 2, right? So here's that at 2. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So here's the point 0, 0,16, which is our y-intercept, which we are looking for. I actually had this, I put this line in here, and it looks a lot maybe here, like somehow or another that these two functions are, are touching each other. They are not. This is a perfect asymptote. So I hope that was really helpful for you. Um, take good notes, and you're going to be seeing this on the quiz. I guarantee.